it's a great honor for me to introduce uh, Dr. Kathleen Reed Martinez. She has been uh, an amazing example to all of us and how to live a professional life bringing glory to God. She has been working in international organizations and with governments throughout the world. Governments call her to ask for advice in how to manage peace, in how to bring resolve conflict, and how to address issues that only the Holy Spirit can heal. She gets to speak into the lives of those that Jesus loves with his healing power, often without using his name, but always using the power of the Holy Spirit. Would you please help me in welcoming Dr. Kathleen Reed Martinez. Thank you, Dr. Weed, and also thank you to both Dr. Weed and Dr. Boyd, who play such vital roles in the academic side of the house here at the university. My job would be so much more difficult without them, so thank you both. I do want to tell you that Dr. Wilson sends his greetings. He was not able to be here today, but he is so proud of you and all that you've done. We've celebrated that we have friends and family here. So now, I, and you're here celebrating that you're going to graduate in just a couple of weeks, yes. <laughs> and now I just want to take a few moments to talk to you about some things that are in my heart. You know, our tradition here is all about being in community with one another. It's about an honor code. It's about how we will live, not to just meet the requirements of that honor code and grades and stuff, but it's about who you're going to be. It's going to be a spirit-empowered leader. We bring to you learning outcomes that are so vital for that in today's world. How do you get to be a spirit-empowered leader? Well you got to have spiritual integrity, one of our big and main, yes, outcomes. Intellectual pursuit, you've got to be a lifelong learner. Personal resilience in the world you live in today. Without it, you don't make it. Or you get run over, or you become as all the others are, and you won't fulfill what God's called you to. You've got to have a bold vision when others have no idea what to do, but you're able to step in the gap and to move forward with a bold vision to make a difference in that situation. You've got to have global engagement. You're not going to be just dealing with the person you grew up next door to. You're going to be dealing with the world and your local community. Global engagement, essential. So I want you just to just take a moment and think about these things. Because you graduates have an incredible destiny. And those of you who are coming behind and will be graduating next year and the year after, God is shaping your destiny even today. Indeed, from the day you were born. I want to tell you, it is an unstoppable destiny. Get a hold of that. It is unstoppable. But before you can go there, you have to understand that it's not just about you. It is about mission critical aspects of the kingdom of God, and it is about your role to play. Because I assure you, you are either going to bring forth good or you're going to bring forth evil in the world. There is nothing in between. So you have to make up your mind today, I can be a part of the mission critical destiny in Christ Jesus to advance his goodness and his grace and his love, or I will only bring forth that which is evil. You may call it other names, but at the end of the day, it will not be pleasing to God. Let's take a look at Matthew chapter 16, verses 13 through 18. There's a riveting exchange between Jesus and the disciples, and I'm going to read it if you want to follow along, but I'm also interjecting some of my own thoughts between the verses. So let's begin with Matthew 16, 13. When Jesus came to the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, who do people say the Son of Man is? 
So Jesus is leading the disciples into an important discussion on his identity. They said, some say John the Baptist, others say Elijah, and still others, Jeremiah or one of the prophets. The disciples offered a few ideas, but they weren't on target, were they? You know, well, John the Baptist, no, that's not who he is. Elijah, no, that's not who he is. So Jesus has to come back and he has to be more direct. In fact, I can just see him looking at Simon Peter and saying, but what about you? Who do you say I am? Now suddenly, Jesus made this situation very personal. And Simon Peter answered, You are the Messiah, the Son of the living God. In that moment, Peter gets a revelation of who Jesus is. And in response, Jesus replied, Blessed are you, Simon, son of Jonah, for this was not revealed to you by flesh and blood, but by my Father in heaven. That meant he had to get close to that Father in heaven, and you'll have to do that throughout your life. And then this next verse is what really gets to me. Jesus is speaking, and I tell you that you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not will not overcome it. See what's happening in this exchange? In verse 17, Peter affirms the identity of Jesus as the Messiah, the son of the living God. So that's where it starts, affirming the identity of Jesus as your Messiah. And in verse 18, Jesus affirms Simon Peter's identity in Christ and Peter's destiny the amazing role that he will play in the formation of the church and the body of believers that still impacts us even today. So as you affirm the identity of Christ, he will affirm your identity and your destiny. So consider the following as we think about our destiny entwined with our identity. You and I can be so easily disrupted, so easily deceived. We can get caught up in social personas, the roles we play with our friends, our family, our colleagues. In fact, we can get very confused about our image and we can lose our authentic personhood. But without that affirmation in Christ of our identity, we cannot fulfill our destiny. So don't be disrupted or deceived. Don't get caught up in so much busyness about what you do that we forget to be who we are in Christ. There are many role models that I could turn to, but I love three of them in the scriptures. So let me just briefly talk to you about those that are some of my favorite Let's start with Daniel. Think you live in a hard time? Daniel was a bit um, rushed out of his homeland and taken to a foreign place in captivity. He went to Babylon. Talk about being culturally and globally engaged. If he weren't, he had to learn it fast. He had that ability and gift of administration just like another favorite of mine, Joseph. He could interpret dreams he was known for his intellectual pursuit. He was at the top of the class when he trained in Babylon. He served a pagan king. Daniel's peers urged him to compromise his faith. All around him, people said, oh, you don't have to do it this way. But nonetheless, he chose to stand strong. He fasted, he prayed just as he had been taught. God was faithful to Daniel because Daniel was faithful to him. And when Daniel faced certain death by being thrown to the lions, the lions didn't touch him. What we need is like Daniel to have that intellectual pursuit all of our days and the spiritual integrity, both of which led by the Holy Spirit to become the men and women of God that he has called us to be. Joseph's life, another one. Was he not personally resilient? I mean, it's not enough to be hated by your brothers, but they throw you into a pit, then you're sold into slavery. Then once you get there, you think things are getting a little bit better, and you get thrown into a dungeon by a lie, by somebody, something you never did. Wasn't even within your character to do it. 
But the next thing you know, you interpret a dream and you wind up at the very highest of the courts in the land. He shows that God-given dreams that he had from childhood seemed impossible at so many stages in his life. Yet God was able to take his gifts and to give him a bold vision, a vision that did not just make his life a little easier or a little nicer or one small little group better, but something that redeemed and saved his family and at the same time the entire nation of Egypt. What resilience. If he had stopped, if he had said, I can't do it, it's too hard, it's too difficult, never forget, make no little plans, and if it seems impossible, it must be God's. And if it's God's, just go along with him and be resilient, and he'll help you get it done. And finally, let's talk about Queen Esther, a woman sitting at the hand of her king, with access to the global leaders of her time. Of course, Esther didn't begin as a queen, but rather she was brought into the king's harem by a decree. Doesn't sound like that would be very easy. Along with all these other young women, want to talk about some competition? But God used Esther's understanding of diplomacy and strategy to appeal to the king to save the Jewish people. When Haman plotted their destruction, she came forward with a strategy to respond. In this story, God takes a young girl and transforms her into a queen who's willing to sacrifice herself for her people. She was resilient. She didn't stop with her call. I hope that you will remember these people. They persevered, and so can you. I want to tell you in closing that my life has not been easy. It has been many decades of struggle and difficulty. It's the mundane things of life, too, that can sometimes create the challenges when you're trying to get things done. But then unexpected things happen, things you never dreamed, things you never wanted. But I want to tell you, as they sang earlier today, the goodness of God has always been with me. He was running after me when I was running as best I could and so tired and so weary. He was there behind me, picking me up, taking me forward. He was a way maker. He was the miracle worker. I want to tell you that he has been faithful all my life. And I've lived so much longer than you. And he was always faithful. But I had to put my identity in him as I recognized his identity. So let me give you these prayerful words as I close. Others may have more in life than you. Give Jesus all that you have. You may find your journey has long, lonely stretches. Keep walking with Jesus wherever he leads. If you find the path too hard and the burden too great to carry, lay it all down and worship at his feet. Some who travel with you may wander away, but Jesus is always running to you and with you. If your destiny seems hard to find, look to the risen Messiah, the King of Kings. He is holding your destiny in his nail-scarred hands. And all we do Nothing is more important than honoring God. And if you honor him, he will honor you, and you will touch the whole world. God bless you. Well, amen. Isn't it wonderful to be in a place where our provost is not only an academic leader, but she is a spirit-empowered academic leader. Let's give her another round of applause for that wonderful message. And why don't we stand to our feet as we close in prayer. The Bible says that you are blessed. According to the Dake Study Bible, the word blessed means to release the potential of God in you. 
So I bless you today. I release the potential of God in you in every area of your life. As you study, I bless you. As you walk across this campus, I bless you. In your finances, in your health, in your mental health, in your academics, you are blessed. We release the potential of God in each and every one of you. In Jesus' name, now go be whole leaders for the whole world. Amen. You are dismissed. This has been a presentation of Oral Roberts University, a world-renowned and fully accredited Christian university with more than 100 undergraduate majors and minors, as well as graduate degrees in business, education, and theology. If you or someone you know is thinking about college, but not sure what to expect, then visit us for one of our Quest Leadership events. Join us for this action-packed, fun-filled, spirit-empowered experience at ORU. Visit classes, attend a Golden Eagle sporting event, worship in chapel, and meet new friends. Want to advance your career but can't move to Tulsa? Then ORU has what you need with convenient online undergraduate and graduate degree programs. Don't wait. You can experience ORU's unique whole person approach to learning and graduate empowered to succeed. Visit us today at ORU.edu.